Hey there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. It's the middle of August, which means the gaming world has flocked to the German city of Cologne for the annual Gamescom convention. I was there for the first three days of this conference, and in this video I'll showcase my personal top 30 indie games you can play down on the show floor. At number 30, Felix the Reaper can be found in Hall 8 via one of the Xbox booths. I've covered Felix a few times before and it keeps getting better and better each time I see it playing out. Remember to keep Felix in the shadows and throw down some fancy shapes as you do death's bidding. One Hand Clapping is a unique 2D platformer that has you sing into your microphone to solve puzzles, all within a minimalist but vibrant landscape with mysterious characters in which you're encouraged to sing to change the world. The White Door is a point-and-click adventure using a split screen for interaction with the protagonist and the environment, where you help your character to regain his memory by exploring his dreams. Next up in Flotsam, you'll scavenge garbage, or rubbish as we call it, from the ocean surface to build and grow your city while you try to survive in this vibrant post-apocalyptic world. Boss Guard supports up to six player local co op and online battles featuring super fast hack and slash action. One player takes the role of controlling a big boss who goes up against a team of Vikings, each with their own abilities. It seems odd, and yet it all works rather well. El Hijo is a spaghetti western styled stealth game where you guide a six year old boy in a quest to find his mother by way of a remote monastery a harsh, unforgiving desert and a frontier town full of crime and villainy. In Overland, playable in the Indie Arena booth, you'll battle your way across the US in this turn-based survival game. While work on Overland has been going on for more than a few years, this demo is new and it's the first time it's been played out to the public. Pine makes a return to the channel having been featured a few times over the past few years. The demo on display at Gamescom sees you take on the role of Hugh, a smart young adult within an alternate reality where humans didn't quite reach the top of the food chain. Up now we have Recompile which is an audio and visual assault on the senses with there being numerous places at the show where you're able to play. I found it a fair challenge with tight platforming and intense combat which keeps you on your toes pretty much throughout. In Jack Axe you join the Jack Sisters in a single or multiplayer 2D open adventure where you take on a wide variety of platforming challenges with your axe being a key component to your abilities. At number 20, Luna the Shadow Dust is a beautiful, fully hand-animated point-and-click adventure, all brought to life by wordless storytelling, stunning cinematics with a musical score to match. Inspired by games of old, I found Luna the Shadow Dust to be a moving tale of adventure puzzling. Spitlings is best described as being a modern take on a hardcore classic arcade game for 1-4 to four players. With over 100 stages within the story mode and over 30 characters to unlock, Spitlings will also feature online leaderboards and even harder modes for those looking for even more of a challenge. What the Golf is a game for folks who don't really like the sport and in the 15 minutes I spent with it, there were many, many laugh out loud moments of silliness. What the Golf is right proper bonkers and playable within the Nintendo Indie World section of their booth. I'm a fair weather football or soccer fan as others might call it, and while football tactics and glory has been out a good while, it's pretty unique with it featuring a mix of team development, turn based mechanics and features more usually found in tycoon style offerings. As seen in the Jeff Keighley show prior to Gamescom opening, I had hands on with Everspace 2 and found it a fast paced and enjoyable single player space shooter with RPG elements. At 20 or so hours in length with story and side quest missions before the end game, Everspace 2 will come to the PC and consoles but not until 2021. Described by its developer as something like Grand Theft Cthulhu, Dead Static Drive which you can find within the Australian section of the Indie Booth Arena 
puts you in the seat of an 80s muscle car in the months leading up to the apocalypse. Here you must survive and scavenge for resources and perhaps try to stop the end of the world from happening. At number 15 and halfway through the countdown, Tiny Tanks offers a 2 to 8 multiplayer game with toy tanks within a completely destructible arena. I played this for a good 20 minutes with three others and found it hugely entertaining with laughs and smiles all around. Another game I featured here before and having recently taken part in the pre-launch beta, Lonely Mountains Downhill is a freestyle downhill mountain bike game with ragdoll physics, a wonderful aesthetic and plenty bone-crushing crashes. Making a fine mashup of something like Celeste and Dead Cells, Scourgebringer, like many here, is playable within the indie booth arena. It's a great looking and fast paced free moving roguelike platformer with controls that feel fluid and the platforming is tight and finely judged. Another hit and a game I've been looking forward to playing for a while, Necro Barista is a gorgeous 3D visual novel about a supernatural cafe based out of Melbourne, Australia, where the dead can spend their last night here on Earth. The anime-inspired aesthetic delivers a subtle and yet cinematic experience that helps draw players into the underlying and captivating story. At number 10 we have Growbot, a 2D point-and-click single-player adventure about a robot trying to save her home from a dark, malevolent force. All in, Growbot offers an intriguing story with beautiful artwork and a fun cast of characters to interact with. Next up in Spiritfarer that's available to play within the Microsoft booths, we have a hand-drawn game in what the developers call a cosy management title about dying. You play as Stella, the ferry master to the deceased, with you needing to build a boat to explore the world, care for your spirits and play in perhaps co-op with friends as Daffodil the Cat. I found this a much needed source of relaxation amongst the hustle and bustle of the conference. Genesis Noir is a surreal noir adventure set before, during and after the Big Bang where a love triangle has gone off kilter as cosmic beings quarrel in the darkness of pre-creation. Inspired by psychedelic poetry and jazz, my short time with it suggests a seamless blend of interactive storytelling and generative art. From the creators of Among the Sleep, Mosaic, with its muted grey, brown and blue colour scheme, is all about a monotonous life as a simple cog of a machine within a corporate dystopia. In Elk Tales of Real Stories, you play as Frigg, a young carpenter travelling to Elk for an apprenticeship. The game is a biographical adventure set on an island like no other, but every character you meet has a story to tell based on truth and tall tales from those that have lived them across tragedy, love and humour. This was one of the biggest surprise finds for me over the course of the whole of Gamescom. Into the last five and first up we have Bogs. Here you play as a pair of sausage type dogs linked by an ever so stretchy belly in what's a daftly brilliantly looking puzzle filled adventure. A Juggler's Tale is an atmospheric side-scroller all set within a medieval puppet theatre play. You play as Abby having escaped from her captors into a world of freedom and adventure. Despite still dangling from her threads, you're still able to guide the character through riddles and traps as you look to secure your freedom. Playable within the Microsoft's ID at Xbox section of the show, Raji an Ancient Epic is an action fighter adventure set within ancient India. Raji, a young girl, is chosen by the gods to stand up and destroy a demonic invasion of the human realm. Along the way, you'll rescue your brother and put an end to a reckless war. With a demo available to play via the game's website, there's a link down in the description. Blood Roots is a comic book styled ultraviolet top down brawler where pretty much everything in the world can be used as a weapon. It's every much fun to play with its combo system as Hotline Miami and is shaping up to be one of the most enjoyable action slasher games of recent times. And taking the top spot in my Gamescom 2019 countdown is Tunic, 
a game I've been looking to play since I first spotted it at E3 in 2017. All this is coming from a single developer based out of Halifax and it oozes confidence and charm with a sprightly and ever so cutesy heroic fox as its main character. There's clearly plenty going on here that looks towards the Zelda series and that's just fine with me. So that's it for my showcase of games from Gamescom 2019. Be sure to slap that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already and let me know which games you'd like to see more of down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again here soon enough for more indie game videos.